Hey guys, welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. So today we're going to be talking about Johanna, how to play Johanna, where she's strong, and just kind of everything about Johanna. So a lot of people have been wondering why Johanna is so strong, why she's so like she's she's considered one of the power picks. She's in in the top tier of, of of champions you can first pick or champions you can pick in Hero League and any game any games I've ever really. She's just a really really strong hero, and people are quite often asking why is that? She doesn't deal much damage. She doesn't kill many people. She can't heal anyone to a max to a to a, to a very good extent aside from myself. And she can't really do that much, so why is she considered so strong? And basically it's because she is quite possibly the best tank in the game at the moment for doing everything a tank should do, which is damage mitigation, peel, and uh, grouping people together and staying alive. And she fits into any team comp. The problem with some of the other tanks is they have a lot of uh, disposition, and that combined with a lot of moves that require players to be in a specific position it's contradictory. For instance, if you have a Kael'thas and a Jaina and ETC or Diablo, while they might be quite good because they can stun them or lock them down in a specific zone, what they're quite often going to do more what they're more often going to do is move them out of position and what that could mean is that a flame strike or a blizzard or something misses which could cost the team a kill. Johanna doesn't do any of that. Johanna just slows moves people slightly in a very, very predictable fashion because you can see it winding up, mitigates damage meanwhile keeping herself alive quite well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the most common build for Joanna, when to take these abilities, when to not, the kind of safe abilities to take, because in my opinion, if you're learning Johanna and if you're not amazingly good at Johanna, the builds which Hotslogs and a lot of other uh, websites give you that are while very, very good are kind of punishing if you do things slightly wrong. So we're just going to go over those and point them out and kind of say what are the safer ones to take if you're really... um. If you're really struggling. So, when the game starts, you're going to want to go to uh, a lane. You can either go in a lane on your own if you are 1v1 and you can kind of hold your own. But you're more likely going to want to go in a lane with uh, a support or maybe an assassin. Obviously, a specialist should be able to hold the lane on their own. At level 1, a good ability to take is Knight Takes Pawn. The other abilities, while good, you shouldn't run out of mana. So, right, just smash is kind of off the table. While good, the other abilities don't really give you that much compared to Night Takes Spawn. And what Night Takes Spawn allows you to do is it allows you to stun mercenaries and minions, which gives you incredible wave clear, um, quite obviously and quite far and away. If you discount the Oryx somewhat, because we're not entirely sure how he fits into the meta at the moment, but she has, for a warrior, incredibly good wave clear. So in the early game, what you want to do is to do what I've just done, just... Um, get involved in the middle of the minion wave and cast condemn stunning them all dealing a big amount of damage and getting out using uh using your trait which from here on out is going to be referred to as iron skin using iron skin as much as possible to make sure that you take as little health damage as possible which is why i like to go in lane with the support so it means you can be a little bit more um ambitious shall we say with the uh, with the condemns and, and that kind of stuff as the game develops, you'll find yourself needing to go for objectives. When this is the case, don't be afraid to cast one last Condemn on the wave. That, that means that um, if you cast on a wave that's 50-50, your wave will shove and their wave won't. If you realise that someone, say you're with the lane on support, and all of a sudden a Zeratul or a Nova comes up to try and kill you, don't be afraid to use Blind to get them out of stealth, for one, if you can, or to stop them or stop their auto-attacks if they're an auto-attack reliant champion, such as Illidan, Valor, uh, Zeratul, uh, Reyna, and a couple of others, you can cast that on them, and uh, for, for uh, one and a half seconds they'll miss, which surprisingly often can um, mean that they stay alive. And in team fights, what you want to do is you want to just group up as many of the enemy team as possible, uh, cast Iron Skin if you know that you're going to be CC'd quite heavily, or if you need to get to a place as quick as possible, using your E to knock people out of stealth or dismount people, uh, and blind someone if they're tunnel visioning someone else, and using uh, Punish to slow everyone down and condemn to uh, group them up together. It's very, very unlikely that anyone's going to focus you because you are the tanks, just keep that in mind, but don't go in too hard. If you are the only person on screen for your enemies, the chances are the enemies are going to start attacking you, which is um kind of not too bad, but not too good. As as you can see, the shield glare does a little bit of damage, so you can use it to dismount people, as I say, and you can use it to finish off someone because as it does have quite a long range. As the game transitions into the uh, into the mid game, you are surprisingly useful at roaming, especially if you can catch people off guard while you don't have any kind of burst initiate. The fact that you can become unstoppable essentially at will means it's incredibly difficult to people to stop you getting right in their faces and if you can um, hit punish to allow a CC to land from the guy you're ganking with it's going to be very difficult for them to stop you. 
At level 4, the go-to talent will be Laws of Hope. Uh, it, it, it kind of acts like Amplified Healing in a way. You have increased health regen, and you have that burst heal if you want to, and the other ones just aren't really that good. You don't want to do the uh, Condemn because you're not built for damage at all. Again, that's why you don't want to do the Punish one, and Amplified Healing is good, but I like Laws of Hope because it means you are, you're more self-sustaining. You aren't going to die if your healer gets taken out, which, of course... You won't do uh, uh, a lot of the time, but you'll find yourself doing quite often. So because of the nature of Johanna, you want to use this ability when you're at about half health and getting damaged, uh, or even if you're not getting damaged. If you pop it early, you'll quite often find that people just don't attack you, not because they don't they, they know you've got it on and they think there's no point in attacking you, but just because no one attacks Johanna. So activate it when you're at about half health. It can be incredibly useful in a, in a turn situation. When you're retreating and you have enemies following you, you can pop Iron Skin, activate that heal, hit them with a stun, with a, with a Condemned stun. And you can really get the drop on some people quite nicely doing that. Uh, at this point in the game, you're going to want to start going for objectives quite aggressively. Sticking with your healer and, and, and looking to roam between each lane. But this will be at about level 4. But do remember that you are going to want to continue soaking experience as your wave clear is going to be incredibly strong. And is going to be surprisingly useful against a solo support. And even you can kind of match up against a specialist who can't deal with you that easily. So if uh, Zagara, who has a hunter kill off cooldown, won't be able to drop as much damage on you as quickly as possible. You can run in and get a condemn off on the group, which will make it incredibly difficult for her to shut the lane. As opposed to if you don't. So at level 7, the uh, you can kind of take two abilities here. If your team is struggling for damage and getting a lot of like free pokes off, you can take Sins Exposed. So what that means is that when you hit them with um with your Shield Glare, they will become marked, and then any any attack on them uh, they will take 72 extra damage. So if you have someone who's just constantly poking the enemy team, you can use that to uh, ensure that they take more damage. And um, yeah, other than that, the one you kind of want to go for is Battle Momentum. The other two are good. And if you find yourself missing a lot of condemns, you can go for a conviction. And if you find yourself dying an awful lot, you can take the Proving Crusade marches on. I would really not recommend these two talents, though. I think Battle Momentum is good just because it's going to be more effective than the Crusade marches on, and it's going to affect all of your abilities. Uh, I don't. I'm 99% sure that uh, Iron Skin isn't effective because it's only basic abilities, and Iron Skin is classed as a trait. But your other abilities are going to come off cooldown significantly faster. So I'm going to go for Battle Momentum. So as you can see, I'm taking a lot of damage and I'm slowed by the Arthurs. If I pop Iron Skin, it's going to put me at maximum speed. Which So if you pop Iron Skin to go unstoppable and then try and cast Condemn, you're going to have a much better time. So that's why I don't particularly like Conviction. Because you can kind of assure yourself running 100% move speed anyway. And it's quite generous. Once you get good at it, it's going to be very difficult for someone to get away from you. And using an ability, an escape ability, like Blink or Vault or something, just to get out of the Condemn range, is usually going to be worth it for the Johanna. So that's why I don't particularly like Conviction or the Crusade Marches On. So I think Battle Momentum just is going to be the good all-round talent. If you're not sure which one to pick, go with Battle Momentum. If you know that your team needs more damage and your team's poking from long range a lot, Sins Exposed isn't going to be awful. So, uh... At this point in the game, at levels 7 to 9, and uh, including 10, you want to be fighting for objectives. As your ult isn't an amazing power spike, and theirs might be, you're, it's going to be very difficult for them to kill you at this point. Beyond level 10, you get a lot more easy to kill because everyone has ults and everyone has a little bit more damage. So push for objectives and try and take some picks if you can. Don't be afraid to, to get condemned to draw someone out of position and try and land a CC from your team, like a root or a stun or something, and then follow up with big damage. Your damage at this point in the game is surprisingly high for a tank. You're not going to be able to duel anyone quickly down. You're not going to be able to burst someone down. But what you can do is you can just quickly kind of deal with them. Uh, and, and just get them to, to kind of leave you alone, even if only for a little while. So, when you hit level 10, the go-to uh, ulti is going to be Blessed Shield. Falling Sword is is much more fun, and it's and it's great, and it's good fun, and it does a lot of damage. But Blessed Shield is just that little bit more CC in that Initiate, which, other than Condemn, which when from a distance is viewed when people know that you're coming in to condemn is very very easy to avoid and blessed shield just isn't you can cast it over walls and all kinds of stuff it allows johanna to tank without being in the front lines it allows johanna to kind of set up in uh attacks which as a tank if you don't have that ability you are really going to struggle every other tank has the ability to slide in or otherwise announce their presence instantly without the team having too much in the way of uh, of stopping them doing this, and this is Johanna's answer to that. With the ETC, it's slide. With Diablo, it's slide. With Muradin, it's jump. Uh, the, there's all kinds of things they can do, and Johanna's is kind of a lot of those abilities ramp, uh, rolled into one. And it only hits um 
it does hit enemies. I thought it I was anyway. So uh, what you can do is you can throw it on minions and it will hit uh, heroes if you want, but that's not the best idea to do it. The best way to use it is to use it in, in, at the start of a team fight when you see someone just slightly out of position, maybe looking to see where you are, you can just throw it on them, and then if it bounces to anyone else, there's someone else nearby. If it doesn't, you can uh, secure follow-up CC because it stuns them for a second, and then you can normally get the kill. So it's incredibly, incredibly strong. Don't be afraid to use it in the chase, and because at this time, you're going to be the guy Black Hearts Bay, you're going to be the guy zoning, Cursed Hollow, you're going to be the guy uh, in front of the tribute, or the girl, I suppose, in this case. You're going to be the one taking the damage, the one the enemy sees first, and that's exactly your role, and if you have a healer behind you and you use your abilities very well, if your team's in the right spot, and of course it's up to you to make sure that you're in a spot for your team to do this, um, your team is going to be able to come in, back you up, and, uh, and be able to kill the enemy team before the enemy team kills you, which, as Johanna, if they use any abilities on you, it's just worse, because it means that they're not going to have those abilities to take out the targets that they actually have a chance of taking out in a 5v5 situation. Ah, oh, lame. So, yeah, you want to go for every objective. You really want to be with your team at this point. While your wave clear is kind of good, um, your team fighting potential is just incredibly strong. So, don't go solo. Stay with your team at all times past level 10. And if you're the only person out on the map, zone and defend as best you can. I almost clicked one button there. That would have been nasty. At level 13, this is where things get kind of difficult. So what hot slogs and get bonked and a few others say, and rightfully so, these are the best talents to take in terms of overall performance, but you have to be good at your hands and know how to use them to maximum efficiency. So they will tell you take Burning Rage. And yes, that's kind of that, that's probably the best talent to take if you know how to how to play these characters. So with Condemn, you're gonna be surrounded by enemies a lot of the time, so it's gonna be good for you and you're gonna get a lot of damage off on your enemies with Burning Rage. However, a lot of people who are new to Johanna don't really know how to use Condemn and don't really put themselves in the best position all the time. And they can find themselves still getting bursted down or taking a little bit too much poke damage. So in order to avoid this happening, and especially if they have like Kale and Jaina, <coughs> excuse me, if the, if the enemy team has Kale and Jaina, you're going to be taking a lot of damage super quick. So what you can take is Spell Shield, and I'm going to take Spell Shield just for the purposes of this video. And what that means is that you just can't get bursted down. They won't. I mean, even if they use all their burst new, they're only going to get you to half health. But what that means is they're only going to get you to 75% health, and it's going to cost them all of their cooldowns. So it's just a really nice kind of safe ability to go with. It it sounds kind of strange to suggest myself saying this because I don't particularly like going for spell shield unless they have incredibly strong um, spell casters like Kalthas, like Jaina. I quite often do go for Binding Rage, but if you are in a situation where you're getting bursted down or you're getting poked too much or you're just new to Johanna and you're not that confident Spell Shield is going to be your, your go-to talent at that point and again at this point you're going to be staying in the team making sure you're at the team all the time in the middle taking as much damage as possible stopping them from dealing as much damage as possible remember to use your Q so at this stage of the game you're sorry I'm going on a bit of a tangent here but it, it does relate quite strongly so at this stage in the game your assassins are going to start getting dived. Post level 10, your assassins are really going to start to take damage, especially if they have someone who's very good at it. And um, you're going to find that a lot of champions are going to have a surprising amount of escape. And this is where Johanna's strength really starts to, cut, uh, to really starts to come through. So you can condemn people away from the people they're trying to kill, which is one incredibly strong way of doing it. Uh, you can cue them, slow them down to allow the person they're trying to kill to get away. Or you can E them to mitigate the damage that they're dealing on your assassins. What I basically mean by that is all of your abilities, even Blessed Shield and even Iron Skin, which allows you to get to them to use these abilities, mean that you can peel incredibly well. So what you have as Joanna is at this stage of the game, you have the tankiness from these two abilities and your traits, and especially if you go Spell Shield. You have the Initiate with your Alt. You have the Crowd Control with your W. You have the Peel with your Q. And you have the Mitigation and De-Stealth Demount with your E. And you can use all of those in every other situation. You can use Condemn to initiate, incredibly strong. You can use Punish to initiate, incredibly strong. You can use E to initiate if there's a stealth or about, incredibly strong. You can use R, you can use all these abilities to do everything, and that's why Johanna's strong. And to learn Johanna, you have to you have to learn when to use these abilities to really maximize the effect of these. And so I'm I'm not gonna go over them because there's countless different situations to go to kind of be in, but just remember that if you're winning 
a team fight and if you're winning the game if you have a talent on them or a couple of levels on them or something remember that your assassins are going to deal more damage than their assassins so keeping your assassins alive is going to be really really important if they get an easy pick on say your Valor and then put your Kael'thas on, on half health while you're at the front lines trying to tank their ETC or trying to take up their Nova or something that's fine that's a good tactic to go with but you're going to lose that fight and you're going to lose your your lead in that in that way so don't be afraid to just pull back start using condemn around your team just pull them away and using punish to slow them down and eat to mitigate the damage and that kind of stuff knowing how to peel and peeling effectively is is one of the most important jobs a tank can do and that's what you're going to want to start to do at this level and slightly before this. Around about 12 to 16 is going to be your time when peeling is going to be incredibly strong. But remember, you do have the tools to do everything else. If you can score a money initiate, don't be afraid to do so, as it can just win you a team fight. And a team fight at, in the mid game, in this kind of 12, 13, 15, or there's 14 in there somewhere as well you can really start to gain a massive lead which when you start the late game if you start the late game while their team's still in the mid game you can really push for those final objectives which allow you to end the game or put you in a situation where you can't lose so moving forward a little bit onto level 16 there's a couple of abilities here there's a lot of abilities here basically the only one we're not really going to talk about is, is fanaticism that's because it's not amazing iron skin movement speed 40% okay that's going to be good but you moving faster isn't going to be that good. You have to assume that other people in your team are going to be able to slow their team down, and that's what they. That's a, I mean, you can slow them down with punish. You can cast punish while condemning. I think. Can you not? I don't know. Uh, I, I swear I've done that before in the past, and I swear some people do it to me. So you, you're going to be able to slow people down really quickly, especially if you get a load of autos off. You're going to be able to do that. So fanaticism really isn't going to be that good. However, the other talents, let's talk about them. So, Holy Renewal, if you find yourself getting poked, or you find yourself getting low, or you just find yourself dying an awful lot, you can take Holy Renewal. It means that every enemy you hit, this is minions, this is mercenaries, this is heroes, this is everything. Every enemy you hit will heal you for 220. So, if you cast that on a minion wave, you're going to heal for 7, is it? Yes, you're going to heal for 7 ticks of that, and that's going to be 1.4k, which is over a quarter of your life. Yeah, that's pretty good. And considering it's on such a low cooldown and it does such little damage, it's gonna you can cast that a load of times. If you get some autos off, you can cast it even more often, and you can just heal really, really quickly. And mana isn't a problem, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, Blessed Hammer's good if your team's uh, lacking a little bit of damage. You can get in the middle of them, cast Condemn, Hammer will go around and do loads of work and really start to hurt them a little bit. But if you're t uh, that's only if you're really, really far in the lead. Likewise, uh, Holy Renewal is very good if you're very, very, very far in the lead. And the other one, the kind of go-to if you're not sure what to pick is going to be Imposing Presence. As a tank, you take pokes, it means that they can't do that much damage for... I don't even know how long it lasts, but not very long. It's just going to mean that they're, they're going to have a very, very, very hard time dealing with you. And then if they do attack you by accident or they just do something to you, it's going to mean that their damage is significantly reduced. And at this stage in the game, them out-damaging you or out-damaging your assassins is going to be the only real way that they're going to start winning these team fights, particularly if you're playing Johanna right. And you have a lead at this point, so imposing presence is, is a good one to take. However, you can take the other ones if you are in the lead and you just want to secure, like you get the damage or you, you stay alive or something like that. So I'm going to go with imposing presence because it's the safest one to go with. In an actual game, I probably go with holy renewal because when I normally play Johanna, I normally make sure that we don't we're not going to need the damage, and that normally is the case. And the damage characters in the game at the moment are so incredibly strong. Uh, the likes of Jaina and Kale and all kinds of other things. Just very, very good characters overall. And at this stage in the game, you're getting to the tail end of the mid game and you're really starting to come into the late game. 16, in my opinion, is the transition between the mid game and the late game. Uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 are the real late game sections. Past that is when you get into the really late game where nothing really changes and it just becomes a grind. So, at this stage in the game, it's going to be all about the team fights. Going around as a 5 when you have Johanna's incredibly strong. However, it's not the only way to win. There is other ways to do it. But my personal favourite is just going around as a 5 when you have Johanna. She can score those money. She'll glare to, to de-steal the uh, Nova or the Zero tool. She can get the Condemns to get the whole team together. And all kinds of good stuff. That's going to be the best way to deal with, uh, to deal with that. And at level 20, the only real go-to talent is Indestructible. Um, it seems kind of boring, especially when you compare it to the likes of Radiating Faith and uh, Storm Shield. Of course, Storm Shield you can go with, 
but you have to be you you have to be really good, and your team has to be really good. She's one of the only warriors, as far as I'm aware. She is the only warrior. There might be one or two others that have access to storm shield, and it basically just means that you have the ability to give everyone a massive shield, which is incredibly strong. That's really good if you if you have trouble peeling, and in the late game you have a really hard time actually dealing with the enemies as they come and attack your back line, and you just want to keep them alive for a little bit longer. Other than that, Indestructible is going to be your main talent. Um, yeah. As you can see, you gain a set equal to your maximum health, so they have to kill you twice, or kill you once, wait five seconds, and then finish you off. It just means you're you're so, so, so difficult to kill. And it means you can kind of do whatever you want in the middle of a team fight. And letting a tank, especially a tank with the with the utility of Johanna, do whatever she wants is bad for everyone. I can't cast those ability because I'm holding control. Um, yeah, so the ability to just do whatever you want is going to be a real game changer here. But Storm Shield is obviously really good if you, if you have a really nice team to go with it. And as the late game develops into the end of the game, make sure you're with your team as they gather the final objectives and take in the last points. Uh, as Johanna, you're incredibly difficult to kill, so don't so uh, don't be afraid to gather coins or gems or anything which you can drop when you die because you're going to be quite difficult to kill. So you're going to be uh, it's going to be easy for you to hang on to them for a while. You synergize incredibly well with heroes that have uh, CC such as Kalthas and uh, Muradin. I know two tanks is kind of dodgy, but if you have the burst to follow up, you can have this kind of chain CC which just works incredibly well. You work well with Tyrand. Uh, as well as a few other heroes that that, that work kind of well. Um, that was that was the worst sentence I think I've ever said in my life. Uh, just play around with play about with with Joanne and you'll find some good synergies. She has a lot of good synergies. She fits into any team comp really well if you're missing a tank. Uh, as I said at the start of the game, there are, as at the start of the video, there are some tanks that don't fit into every team comp very well, and there are even less that fit into a very specific comps very well. And Johanna kind of does that. Without too much trouble, she can just kind of be like, okay, you need someone who's difficult to kill, who's going to be able to make their lives a little bit more difficult. Pick Johanna. She makes it surprisingly far in Hero League, but you can pick her first pick, and she's not a weak uh, pick to take first. So that's going to be how to play Johanna. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching it. If you do have any suggestions, any feedback for me, please let me know. And if you have any ideas for new videos or specific heroes you want to see, please leave a comment down below telling me what you want to see, and I'll do my best to get onto it. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I have been Mr. G, and I will see you next time.